On February 2, 2024, NVIDIA quietly released the RTX 3050 with 6GB of VRAM. No fanfare, no announcement. It was pitched as an affordable option for mainstream users, aimed at the budget-conscious market, but shortly after reviews and users weren't impressed. Many criticized the card for having too little VRAM and underwhelming performance for its price, with some claiming it couldn't even match older generation GPUs leading many to wonder if it was still worth buying. So what really happened with this GPU? How does it perform over a year after release and is it still a viable option today? Let's dive in and find out together in this video. First, let's look at the context behind the RTX 30506GB. From a technical and supply chain perspective, instead of continuing production on the larger GA106 chip used in the 8GB version, which is more expensive, NVIDIA switched to the smaller GA107GPU, roughly 30% smaller in die size. This not only reduces manufacturing costs per wafer, but also increases production output. From a market perspective, NVIDIA aimed to fill the sub $200 segment, marking the first gaming GPU under $200 from NVIDIA in five years. The previous GTX 16 series cards were already outdated, while competitors like AMD and Intel, the 6GB RTX 3050 was positioned to capture this budget-conscious gaming audience. When you hear RTX 3050 6GB, many might think it's simply a 3050 8GB with 2GB of VRAM removed. But in reality, it's a comprehensive cut-down version, not just a memory downgrade. The original RTX 3050 8GB launched three years ago using the GA106 chip, while the 6GB version uses the smaller GA107, roughly 30% smaller in die size. This also means CUDA cores are reduced by about 10%, and both Tensor cores and RT cores are cut down. Additionally, the boost clock drops from 1,777 to 1,470 MHz almost a 20% decrease. All of these changes help lower power consumption. The most obvious difference is the VRAM. The 8GB version uses a 128-bit memory bus, while the 6GB model is cut to 96-bit, reducing memory bandwidth by 25% to just 168GB per second. For newer VRAM-heavy games, this will definitely be a limitation. To be honest, NVIDIA's naming here is misleading and a bit frustrating. They really should have called this card the RTX 3040 or even 3040 Ti instead of keeping the 3050 name because the actual performance has been cut down significantly. Using the 3050 label makes buyers think they're getting a cheaper version of the 3058GB, when in reality it's a completely different, slower product. <laughs> to make things even more confusing, NVIDIA is reportedly preparing to release yet another card under the 3050 name. We'll break down this bizarre naming strategy in another video, so make sure to hit subscribe to catch the latest updates and analysis. On the upside, the TDP is now just 70 compared to 130 watts on the 8GB version. This means the card runs cooler, consumes less power, and most importantly, it doesn't require any additional power connectors. You can plug it straight into the motherboard and it works making it perfect for entry-level PCs with lower wattage power supplies. Let's compare this card with a few others. A used GTX 1660 Super, a used RX 5700 XT, and a brand new RX 660, covering a range from budget to mid-tier. On the used market, a 1660 Super goes for just over $100. The RX 5700 XT is around $150, and a brand new RX 6600 sits at roughly $200. For context, a 3050 with a 6GB drive is around $180, meaning it's competing directly with the 5700 XT and RX 6600. The kicker? Despite being a 2024 release, the 3050 delivers performance comparable to the 1660 Super from four years ago. Some might argue that the higher price is justified by the inclusion of ray tracing and DLSS, but here's the catch. When you actually enable these features, FPS drops noticeably, and gameplay becomes laggier than without them. Makes you wonder if NVIDIA is really giving value 
or if they're just marketing gimmicks to justify a higher price. I'm not here to judge anyone's spending habits. What matters is understanding your own needs and picking a GPU that fits them. While the RTX 3056GB may perform on par with, or even slightly below, a GTX 1660 Super. In certain games, it has clear advantages in media workloads thanks to its place in the RTX 30 series. For starters, it features the newer NVENC encoder, delivering video encoding quality close to the 1660 Super, while its decoding capabilities are significantly stronger. The 3050 supports AV1, a modern codec quickly becoming the standard for high-quality video. This means working with AV1 footage or streaming 8K YouTube videos, mostly AV1, is much easier compared to the GTX 1660 Super, which lacks this support. A V1 also reduces file sizes while maintaining image quality, saving bandwidth. On the graphics rendering side, the RTX 3050 benefits from a higher CUDA core count. For GPU-accelerated tasks like Blender, Premiere, or After Effects, it can outperform the 1660 Super especially when taking advantage of its tensor cores and RT cores. Features the 1660 Super doesn't have. And here's the system we'll be testing on. A B760 motherboard paired with an Intel Core i5-1240F, 32GB of RAM and dual channel, a 1TB NVMe M.2 SSD, all running on Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. First, we'll start with Heaven Benchmark running on DirectX 11 at medium settings in Full HD. After the test, you can clearly see the performance gap between the 3050 and the 1660 Super. The 3050 delivered an average of 130 FPS, with a score of 3,291. Meanwhile, the 1660 Super reached 159 FPS with a score of 4,004. That puts the 1660 Super about 20 to 22% ahead in both average frame rate and overall score. Next up is video rendering. For this test, I prepared a 10 minute full HD project in Adobe Premiere. The results are pretty eye opening. The 3050 finished the render in just 2 minutes and 39 seconds, while the 1660 Super took 4 minutes and 46 seconds. That means the 3050 was nearly twice as fast, about an 80% improvement. In PUBG at low settings, the 1660 Super reached around 160 FPS, slightly ahead of the 3056 GB at 145 FPS. However, that extra performance came at a cost. The 1660 Super pulled 115 watts, nearly double the 68 watts of the 3050. In short, while the 1660 Super has a small edge in raw frame rates, the 3050 delivers far better efficiency per watt. In Minecraft with shaders, both the 3056 Gigabyte and the 1660 Super were pushed close to full load. The 3050 managed 74 FPS while drawing only 68 watts whereas the 1660 Super delivered 70 FPS but consumed a hefty 123 watts. In Black Myth, Wukong at medium settings, the 3050 hit 57 frames per second, while the 1660 Super managed 55 frames per second. The big difference was power, 69 watts versus nearly 120 watts. Performance was nearly the same, but the 3050 ran far more efficiently, cooler, quieter, and easier on power. Looking across all four game tests, one strength stood out consistently. The 3050 delivers outstanding performance per watt. While its FPS isn't always higher than the 1660 Super, it consistently runs at nearly half the power, stays cooler, and benefits from newer features like AV1 Decode, DLSS, and long-term driver support. At its current price of around $170 to $175, it's an excellent value. Smooth, full HD gaming, lower energy use, and future-ready media capabilities all in one. In short, the 3050 is a very smart buy in this price range. What do you think about this card?
share your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.